Hi, we're now going to make a quick mozzarella, a cheese that can be made in under 90 minutes. Because the name in the game of mozzarella is the level of acidity, we get there in this recipe by injecting a large amount of citric acid. The upside is it doesn't take much time. The downside is you will find this cheese does not have the intense flavor of the longer fermenting cheeses that we had in the other recipe. But this cheese is an excellent cheese to have in the refrigerator, tasty, and it also is a cheese that melts very well, so it's great for pizzas. Okay, to get started, we're going to need a gallon of milk, and I use a non-homogenized, low-heat pasteurized milk, a stainless steel kettle for heating your milk. You're going to need one and a half teaspoons of citric acid dissolved in one cup of filtered water, and a half teaspoon of rennet dissolved in one quarter cup of filtered water. Now, in my recipe, I use two optional ingredients. Both are meant to enhance the flavor of the cheese. The most important is the therophilic culture, C201, that I get from cheesemaking.com. I use one packet of this. I also use lapace powder, one eighth teaspoon dissolved into one third cup of water. Now the most important thing, like I said, is the thermophilic culture, but both of these are my attempts to increase the level of flavor that you get from this cheese. The lapace powder has to be mixed at least 30 minutes prior to it being used. So one of the things I do is because I let the thermophilic culture sit for 30 minutes, is at the point in time I add the thermophilic culture, that's when I mix the lapace powder in my one-third cup of water. The first step in this recipe is to heat your milk to 86 degrees. This should take you about 10 to 15 minutes using the lowest heat on your range. The milk has now reached 86 degrees. So at this point we do the first optional step, which is we add the culture. And because I'm using a dry culture, I'm going to first sprinkle it on the top of the milk and let it sit for two minutes. Now that the milk is set for two minutes, I stir it so that I can incorporate the culture throughout the milk. I just do a quick stir here to get it worked in. And after doing that, I'm going to cover the milk. And I'll let it sit now for 30 minutes. Also, at this point is when I mix up the lapace, if I'm going to use that later in the recipe. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. When you return to the recipe, the next steps happen in rapid succession, so you want to be prepared. As you set up the milk to work with the culture, Mix up your lapace because you want it to sit for at least 30 minutes prior to being used. When you have about 5 minutes left for the culture to work, mix up both the citric acid and the rennet. Remember for the citric acid you use 1 and a half teaspoons dissolved in 1 cup of water, and for the rennet you use a half teaspoon of rennet dissolved in 1 quarter cup of water. Okay, the milk is now set for half an hour and we're ready to begin the recipe. We're going to add a half, we're going to add our citric acid mixture and we have to quickly and briskly incorporate it. Once we do that, we'll turn the heat back onto the milk and continue heating it. So to add your citric acid mi mixture, you pour it into your milk, and by briskly, I mean you really stir it aggressively. And you're gonna stir this for at least two minutes, because you wanna try to get that citric acid as quickly diffused throughout the milk as possible. So, uh, Really work it aggressively. And while you're doing that, I actually am going to start the heat underneath the stove. And I'm going to start it at the lowest level of my burner. And you know, I, I'm going to scrape as I come through here along the sides to be sure I get all of the residue back into the milk. And we're going to keep, we're going to just keep stirring this aggressively for just a little bit longer here. And now I'm to the point where I think I can just give it a few more stirs and then I'm going to slow it down. But I'm going to continue stirring this and monitoring the heat of the milk. And we're going to monitor the heat and at 95 degrees will be our next step. Okay, it's now reached 95 degrees, so I'm going to add the lapace solution and incorporate that. And notice I still have the heat underneath the milk and I'm going to continue heating the milk until it reaches 100 degrees. Okay, it's now time to add the rennet because the milk has reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to mix in my rennet, which is a half a teaspoon diluted in a quarter a cup of water, and I'm going to add it in here and gently stir it for about 30 seconds. You'll see that I'm going to be stirring low to high 
to try to mix the rennet as thoroughly through the solution as possible, but I have to do this gently because I don't want to bruise the curd. I'm going to continue doing this now. I should be just to the end because I've been stirring it for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to remove my spoon. I'm continuing the heat underneath the pot, and I'm going to put a thermometer in the middle of the mixture to measure the temperature, and we'll continue the heat under this mixture until it reaches 105. Okay, so the curd has now reached 105 degrees. You have to be careful as you put your thermometer in, just a little bit over the bottom, uh, but not too far up into the curd. Once it reaches 105 degrees, you turn your heat off, cover your curd, and you let it sit undisturbed for the next 15 minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, so let's look at the curd. You can see that the curd has formed nicely. And it's actually a little submerged underneath the whey, which is what you should expect. So now what we have to do is harvest the curd. Okay, to harvest the curd, I have lined a mesh colander with one ply of cheesecloth. What I'm gonna do is pour off most of the whey and then scoop out the curd so that it can drain in the cheesecloth and the colander. So to do this, you want to just be sure that you're keeping something here to prevent the uh, curd from flowing out as you pour off some of the extra whey. So pour off as much as you can without losing any of the curd. So this makes the scooping process much easier. And then what you can do is you can start scooping the curd right into the um, cheesecloth. Now what I like to do actually is to use a, a scooped metallic uh, spoon for doing this. And the cheesecloth is actually helping me make sure that very little of the curd kind of runs through the, the uh, mesh of the strainer. I find that if you don't use a cheesecloth, you get a lot of curd stuck in the mesh. That reduces your yield, plus it makes cleanup a real problem. So you just keep doing this until you get everything out. And then once you get everything out, you're going to let the uh, curd sit uh, in the uh, basket for about five or ten minutes before you move it to a place where it can continue to cure. Okay, what I'm going to want to do is just gently roll a little bit of the curd, lifting the edges of the cheesecloth up, just to help encourage some of the excess whey to uh, leave it. And then what I'm going to do is deposit this entire amount into uh, my colander, which I'm sitting inside of a glass bowl, because this is ultimately where I'm going to uh, bathe my curd in hot water and stretch it. And I'll make sure I get most of the cheese, any re residual cheese curd off of the cheese cloth, because that's additional cheese in our yield. And we're now going to let this sit in this colander for 30 minutes, turning it occasionally, probably every 5 to 10 minutes. And as you turn it, it will become getting more plastic and shiny looking. And that's how you know the curd is ripening appropriately. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, and the curd has a nice shiny feel and look to it. I've turned it over a couple of times, and it's ready to go. However, during that 30 minutes, I've been doing other things as well. I've heated a pot of water to 185 degrees, because this is going to be my source for the hot water bath. I also have a glass measuring cup for scooping the water and putting it into the water bath for the curd. I've also grabbed a pair of heat resistant rubber gloves, some cheese salt, I'm going to add one teaspoon during the stretch process, as well as an ice water bath. And I've included a form which is has holes in it uh, that I'm going to actually deposit the curd so it cools after the stretching process. Okay, I have my rubber gloves on, so let's begin. One of the secrets when you do uh, mozzarella is never pour the hot water directly on the curd. So what I'm going to do is pour hot water into the glass bowl and set the colander down into the hot water. Now I've just added it. The curd is completely submerged. And what I'm going to do is check about every three minutes and add additional hot water. The curd will probably have to set in the hot water at least five to seven minutes before it's ready to stretch. So I'll be back in three minutes so we can check on the curd. Okay, it's been three minutes, so we're going to first check the curd to see how the stretch is going so far. And then if we need to, we will add more hot water. 
So you check the curd by just inserting your hands in and pulling up on it. And you see it's starting to stretch. But what you want it to do is stretch almost like taffy. And so I'm going to add a little bit more hot water to it and probably come back at about the five, five and a half minute spot to see if it's ready to do the final stretch. Okay, the curd has been in the hot water for about five and a half minutes, maybe just a tad longer. So I'm going to check it because I suspect it's probably ready to stretch. So as you pull up on it, you want it to really just start stretching. Oh, this is looking really good. I see it's starting to stretch automatically under its own weight. So I'm going to move the bowl out of the way. So you take the curd up in your hands and you just begin stretching like this, just like pulling taffy. And what you want to do is stretch it until it becomes nice and smooth and shiny. You see that's happening pretty quickly here. So I'm going to do, give it a few more pulls. Be careful because the more you pull the curd at this stage, the drier your cheese will be. So you want to make sure that you don't over dry it. And this is an area where you probably have to experiment a little bit to figure out how dry you want your cheese to be. So what I'm going to do is also add my salt now. So remember I add one teaspoon of cheese salt right onto the curd. Fold it against itself, and I just continue stretching. Now, if your curd gets really stiff while you're stretching it, you can always return it to the hot water. But this is looking really good. I'm actually quite happy with where it's at right now. And so what I'm going to do is stretch it one last time, and now just start to make a ball out of it. So you see how shiny and, and smooth it is. And as I make a ball out of this, I'm going to return it. Just do a little quick bath here in the hot water. This will help it form into the final ball that I want. Now, if you look at that, I have a really big mass of mozzarella, probably close to uh, 20 ounces or so of it. And now what I'm going to do is plunge it into the ice water bath using this form. The ice is on the outside of the form, and there are holes in the form. And it's now going to sit for 30 minutes uh, in the ice water bath. And that's when we will dry it off and refrigerate it. Okay, all the hard work is now done. After 30 minutes, remove the mozzarella ball from the ice water bath and dry it off. I then store it in the refrigerator 12 hours prior to serving. The other thing I like to do is I like to keep it inside that form that I use in the ice water bath when it's sitting in the refrigerator for the first couple of hours. This allows it to retain its shape better. With this type of mozzarella, I encourage you to eat it quickly, no more than three days or four days in the refrigerator. If it sits longer, it has a tendency to actually lose some of its shape and become a little bit rubbery. However, this cheese is excellent. Great flavor, great versatility, and it's really an effective cheese whenever you need the cheese to melt on something like a pizza. So I hope you're going to try this and enjoy. Take care.